Hi everyone. My name is Masuyo Ando from Aska Academy. Uh, I feel so honored to be here, and I'd like to uh, exp express my special thanks to those who supported me. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, OER translation project. And actually, this project are, are participated by four members, Professor Yoshimi Fukuhara, Toru Kishida, Hisaya Nakamura, and myself. And uh, as you might already know, uh, Professor F uh, Fukuhara passed away last month, but uh, we're going to succeed his wish. Uh, this is about Asuka Academy, a non-profit organization in Tokyo, and uh, we started in 2014. And uh, our mission is to pro uh, providing uh, opportunities to learn quality OER to Japanese in Japanese language. And we issue certificate for those who completed our courses. And the translation is done by volunteers. And uh, uh, there are so many quality OER contents in the world, but most of them are in English. But for ordinary Japanese, it's very hard to study those subjects in English. So we decided to deliver uh, those courses uh, together with Japanese translation. And this shows how it works. We have uh, lots of contents from OER, and uh, we have financial resources from member companies, and uh, uh, we uh, look for translators. Uh, those are the volunteers. Uh, and we all coordinate those resources so that we can deliver uh, translated OER to Japanese. And the learners include uh, include business persons, K-12 students, lifelong learners. And so far, uh, we translated more than 100 courses, and uh, the total number of enrollment is more than 30,000, and the total number of registrants is nearly 9,000. And we translated those courses like TU Delft, MIT, UC Irvine, Yale, Open University, etc., etc. Et and uh, this is the number in mid-October, and the volume is growing every day. And how translated courses look like? Uh, you will see the green tab are showing uh, the subtitles, and uh, there are some choices. You can show. Uh, both Japanese and English subtitles, or Japanese only, or English only, or no subtitles. So this is a good way to uh, develop language skills too. And see, uh, those, you know, uh, this is a case of uh, both Japanese and uh, English subtitles, and uh, these are shown, uh, simulated with uh, narrations. And uh, what are the benefits for learners? Uh, they have more access to OER with language assistance, and uh, they can improve English skills, and uh, we can position this as a gateway to learn OER in English in the future. And we have uh, about 1,500 translators registered, and uh, we uh, maybe I'm going to talk about Hiro Gakuen's case. Uh, they started as an extracurricular activities. And uh, uh, the first course was an open camp from UC Irvine. And uh, 17 students participated. And we got award from the Ministry of Education uh, 2017. And this is just a short video showing how it looks like. Oops. Yeah. In Japanese. <laughs> this high school in the downtown Tokyo. This is a teacher in charge of international courses. The students in international courses have good command of English. But uh, she would like them to use their English skills not only for themselves, but for the society. This is the purpose of their, uh, their program. 
をいただいた時にあぜひ生徒たちにあの呼びかけてみたいなと思いました子どもたちそれぞれですけれども、so, あの楽しそうにやっていますあのコミュニケーションもコミュニケーションフェイスとフェイスを使っていますし、放課後残って4人のグループ、1つ、3人、4人でグループ1つ組んでますけれども。Oops. Okay, so、uh, what they learned from this pro program the first, project management, the second, social contribution, third, deep understanding of, about the subject. And they develop subjective attitudes. These are the educational effects from their、uh, project. And、uh, this is a picture when、uh, Professor Larry Cooperman visited Hiro Gakuen.、Uh, all these volunteers got together and took a picture. And then、uh, we have uh, some other uh, good uh, contributors uh, as a you know, volunteer translator, like、uh, Yokohama National University. The Japanese Red Cross Language Service and the Tamagawa Gakuen. The last one uses this project as a part of CAS or International Baccalaureate Program. And、uh, we think that the key to success is to align translation volunteers, translation projects with、uh, the educational goals of each,、uh, each organization or individual. And we support them to grow. And we have some challenges, which is that our business model. Is based on the contribution from c o m p a n y So financially, we have to more c o m p a n y members. And、uh, also the quality assurance. We provide specialist advice so that we can assure the quality of the translation. But we might think about the possibility of、uh, machine translation by AI. And the next step for continuing growth, we are planning to issue open badge、uh, to those who completed our courses. And to volunteers who completed the translation project. So, if anyone here who are knowledgeable about how to effectively use open badges, please let me know. So, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you. And domo arigato in Japanese and、uh, easy to remember. Duomo a r i g a t o Thank you. Thank you, Ms. m a s u i g a Thank you. We have time for a quick question. Question? No questions. Okay, so we're very, being very clear. <laughs>、uh, so thank you, Masuyo. We'll continue. Can I just. Oh, oh, I didn't see you, Dave. Sorry. Thank you. Would you do anything differently?、Uh, oh, excuse me? What? Would you. If you were going to do the whole thing again and you were learning from something. Um, that didn't go as smoothly as you would have liked, would you do anything differently? Uh, yeah, yeah.、Uh, could you explain a little bit? <laughs>、um, <laughs> do differently is do our activities or volunteers or? Ah, 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 I see. I see what you mean. Okay. <laughs> uh, maybe, uh, let's see.、Uh, I think that、uh, maybe social recognition is important、uh, because that,、uh, they,、uh, when they do volunteers,、uh, they feel that、uh, they, they should be so proud of you know, their achievement. So,、uh, Maybe they need some, more social recognition for their、uh, you know, volunteer work. So maybe I would you know, try to get some effort, and、uh, open badge is one of them. But、uh, may, there may be some other、uh, ways to do so. Thank, Thank you, Masuya. Thank you very much. And we invite、uh, Gabriel Marinello from our、uh, Open Science Award winner. Gabriel, welcome. Thank you. 
Schatzra. Sì, pennina. C'è un microfono. Ok, uh, sorry for the delay. Um, I'd love to start with a piece of a story of myself and this project. So basically of uh, how everything started up so you can understand all the things better, okay? <coughs> basically, um, I think like three years ago I was uh, in London for a traineeship in a hospital uh, at Guy's Hospital in London. I come from medicine as a background. And uh, I was there, um, uh, and while there, I was doing some research with a professor of mine down in Italy, Alberto Bedogni, uh, on a pathology called uh, biphosphonates related osteonecrosis of the jaw. It's a bad pathology of the jaw phase. It's like a cancer, but not that <coughs> sorry, but not that dangerous like a cancer, okay? And uh, while doing this research, uh, I realized that there were so many different definitions of this pathology, of this physical entity, you know? That the physical entity is the same, but we are describing it in many, many different ways. <coughs> um, there were like 30, 40 different definitions of, the patho of this pathology. And imagine this situation now. Imagine two research teams that want to find an answer to this question, what what is the best treatment for this pathology? This pathology or, or breast cancer or whatever, okay? And uh, imagine that <coughs> they have to start, um, uh, they necessarily have to start from the definition of the pathology itself, right? To compose their study. And imagine now that uh, um, they have to choose from 30, 40 different definitions of this pathology. And this problem is actually repeated for each of the definitions which um, compo <coughs> compose the, the study, the article, okay? Um, so the situation will look like this. Um, two research teams, they're composing two uh, related studies. So what's the best treatment for whatever you want, okay? Like breast cancer. And they usually start from uh, a different definition of the pathology they are studying. Okay, and they repeat this uh, problem for each of the definitions, okay? So basically, um, these two articles are composed of a different mix of definitions, and the result is that they are totally incomparable. Even if the question is the same, the two studies are totally incomparable. So you cannot uh, um, find one univocal answer uh, to, the, to the research query, okay? And this problem is actually um, ubiquitous. It's everywhere. In Europe, in the United States, in Asia, it's everywhere. Ever wondered why we have so many different guidelines, health guidelines? Uh, the Italian ones, the UK ones, the American ones, the Japanese ones, and so on and so on. Because we are doing research with different ingredients, different, different um, definitions. So the essential ingredients of research are different for related uh, research queries. Oh, sorry. Okay, this was the first part of the problem. The second part is, uh, and is the, is the, the most well known, is that uh, research does compose, so um, inconsistent from the very beginning is uh, submitted to scientific journals, okay? They perform the famous peer review, so they call one, two, three peer reviewers at most, okay, um, related to the topic from the field. And they select the best, um, the best research article they can find. And then they publish them, and we consider what they publish uh, ipsy dixit, like the best, the best on, on, on earth, right? 
uh, because it, it, it has the name like nature, science, and so on, uh, which is related to the impact factor of the journal and all the things that you already know. So these are two big issues in science. So the production of science from the very beginning um, where we're using different definitions and the quality check of science. Uh, the quality check is kind of biased, you know? So basically, this is what we are proposing with, with chaos. We are asking researchers to compose not just the articles, so the final product of the works, but also the definitions, the essential ingredients of the articles, okay? Um, and we are asking them to cluster all these definitions under the same caps, like all the definitions of breast cancer, for example, 30 different definitions. Do you know how many different definition of, definitions of quality of life there are out there? Quality of life, which is an essential parameter in medicine, okay? If not, uh, what, what is medic medicine fighting for, you know? There are 1,000 and enough different definitions of quality of life. And depending on what you choose, you can completely change the study results, completely. So, <coughs> basically, we are asking them to compose all these definitions, to cluster them, and to review and rate them, so that they can crowdsource um, the, the ranking of these ingredients, of these de definitions, so that they can, uh, at the very end, compose new research with the best definitions on the planet. I mean, the most shared definitions, the one that the community has decided to be the best ones, okay? So the final result will look something like this, okay? So consistent definitions amongst, amongst the community, amongst the researchers, to compose um, comparable research, comparable papers, okay? And to boost the reproduci uh, reproducibility of research and the comparability of research, okay? So, um, answers like, um, or better, questions like, uh, what's the best treatment for, I don't know, uh, breast cancer, okay, again, can be answered more or less um, uniquely, okay? This is the team of chaos, uh, my dream team, and these are basically our partners. We are partnering with all these guys, okay, um, to uh, create the best environment for researchers to create from the very beginning better research. So more reproducible, more comparable uh, from the very beginning, okay? This is the main site, and that's it. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you. Thank you. Question? Yeah, of course. Okay. Sure. Oh, two slides. Oh, sorry. There we go. Okay. Great. No question? No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Gabriel. And we continue listening to our wonderful winners now with Ali Okada. And she's going to share with us uh, Open App. Just a minute to open the website. Oh. Just to try to, you know, to show the, the video, start with the video, but I just a minute. Uh. Oh, Marcella, just stay here. Where is the uh, the uh, the yes, the video that is linked with the um, what's the award announced? Between the, the schedule or the awards? Yeah, do you know when you announced the awards? I mean the awards. Okay. We have 
which is the 10 second video that shows exactly what is this VR classroom, which I'd like to make some links within in five minutes. But the video is just a very short. That video. Oh, I'm, okay, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. So the app is part of a project which it, we can, uh, you can access in the website, and then I have a, a short video there. to show. <laughs> to show the background. Just a minute. Okay. I would like to call attention here for this beautiful title of this conference. Oh, yes. Okay. So, uh, Open education for an open future. And what is the open future that we want to build together with open education? And that question is exactly what moved, what has inspired my work, and in particular, oops, but I just here. So I'm very interested in scientific literacy to support a desirable future which is the concept of RRI. I'd like to know, please, um, raise your hands if you are aware about RRI, this concept. Okay, I mean, just a few people, okay, great. So RRI is a concept created by the European Commission and it's about to align any scientific development with societal issues and uh, promoting science with and for society. So here, if you go to uh, Brussels, you can see the European Commission building, and they have a timeline in the, bu the building. So right now, they are focusing large amount of money funding uh, for open science, which we saw a presentation right now, yes, previously, and open schooling, which is a new concept for the open education. And uh, I, I would like to call attention as well for this book, which is about, um, uh, we call it uh, social activism which is in science, scientific literacy. And that book that was created by uh, Derek Hodgson uh, just inspire us with what is scientific literacy and how to empower citizens for uh, the open future. And this beautiful uh, sentence, when you open this book, which is available, uh, you can see that um, it's the first sentence, you are at the heart of everything that matters. So, um, and here the important question which inspired us, yes, what can we, how can we guide the students at the heart of everything that matters? So how open education can do that? We need to bring the purpose for the open education movement, which is align and building together uh, this future, desirable future, sustainable world. So uh, we try to align, with this beautiful image, 
these two hands and the world in the, in the center. Yes, it is about how we can bring science, technology, and education to address the global challenges and to address the, um, also the local challenges. And we have here the seven global challenges promoted by the European Commission and, and UNESCO, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. So, and the whole history of open education, which started with uh, open content, open license, OER, MOOC, and then you have open science, open data, and then now open schooling. And then how we can bring that open movement, yes, for, you know, to build a better world. So, this is a VR, open up VR classroom. This is one example of our project. And we are trying to understand how we can act now, yes, uh, to visit the uh, different stakeholders to support this movement. Yes, to address, the, the, to address this responsible research and innovation with open schooling. What is open schooling? So this is part of uh, another funded project uh, from the European Commission, Engage, that we brought all in interesting uh, topics uh, and science in the news, and we created the open educational resources for teachers. And also, uh, we provide the course, that MOOC in 10 languages. But we started with a simple way for teachers to promote, uh, build step by step, using open education, the important skills for RRI, with the lesson, then sequence, and now the open schooling project. So, and that is the framework that we used. We start with science in the news, important topics, and then connecting this with um, a different group. Can you see the, the we call the different stakeholders, like industry, entrepreneurs, like technologists, and also the uh, schools, um, science communicators, and they were helping us to create resources together. And then these resources we discussed with the students and you try to bridge the informal learning that is in science in the news, the formal learning that is the science curriculum and the also non-formal learning, which is all the OERs that are available for them. So, and here is uh, the 10 important inquiry skills for RRI, which is uh, very based on the Dewey's work, John Dewey, in education, and we brought these five new uh, elements, components, skills, that is to understand the risks, examine the consequences, um, uh, also use ethics and evidence. So, uh, sorry, just here to, to finish, we have it, all these different stakeholders that we needed to bring together to solve the problems. This is the way that we created the open app. And I would like to finish this question, this short presentation with this summary. Is the open up, bring it together, science, technology, and education uh, for um, global challenges and to understand how we can guide students, learners for developing a desirable future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ali. Um, anybody has a question for Ali? No questions. Okay, thank you. And we continue with our colleagues of uh, Open Innovation and Open Research from Tecnológico Monterrey. Marisol Ramírez and Silvia Farias and Alberto Mendoza.
¿Te los dejo aquí tú los abres? Sí, bueno, son muy raros. Están aquí pegaditos los dos. Aquí, aquí. ¿Con cuál te estás? Con un neopenino, bello. Bueno, y ahorita que se cierra ahí está. Presented under the awards category of Open Innovation, it follows the criteria of an outstanding initiative that brings a new approach to open education. It offers ideas and solutions that present innovative applications of OER to create new opportunities and address existing challenges in open education. This initiative is part of the 266632 by National Laboratory on Smart Sustainable Energy Management and Technology Training. It's funded by the National Council of Science and Technology, CONACYT, and by the Energy Sustainability Fund of the Secretariat of Energy of Mexico, CENER. In the interdisciplinary, collaborative, and open innovation project, we work with new approaches to open education, integrating training solutions and applying OER through 12 MOOCs with innovative strategies in order to offer new entrepreneurship opportunities to overcome the challenges of energy sustainability. The development of the project is based on the Quad Helix strategy for innovation, including the following parties, for company, Federal Electricity Commission, in government, National Council of Science and Technology and the Secretariat of Energy of Mexico, in academia for Mexican institutions, Tecnológico de Monterrey, Tecnológico Nacional de Mexico, and the National Institute for Electricity and Clean Energies. From international institutions, Arizona State University and the University of California at Berkeley, as well as networks, research groups of strategic change approach to climate change and educational innovation research, Open Energy Network and UNESCO chairs ICDE, Open Educational Movement for Latin America, and the civil society with more than 200,000 participants from more than 50 countries. The goal is to support the training of human resources specialized in energy sustainability and to develop human talent with the necessary capabilities to respond to the technological conditions prevailing in the energy value chain, electric power sector. Through graduate programs, massive open online courses that will be available nationwide and endorsed through a competency certification process. In educational innovation, contributions are made in the integration of new resources and strategies in MOOCs, such as biometrics, virtual and augmented reality resources, gamification, challenges, remote laboratories, and open educational resources. The collaborative and multidisciplinary construction is demonstrated by the work of the Energy and Climate Change Group, the Research and Innovation in Education Group, the Creative Team of Educational Innovation of Tecnológico de Monterrey, the Open Energy Network, and the UNESCO Chairs ICDE Open Educational Movement for Latin America. In open education, the contributions are given by offering training with 12 MOOCs that are implemented through Open Platforms Mexico X and edX. The MOOCs have had more than 200,000 participants from more than 50 countries. As a result and contribution to open education, this project generates new approach to open innovation through the development of entrepreneurial talent and contributions to the knowledge of open educational innovation. It also generates new opportunities for products and services such as educational innovations for environments with open technologies, services and strategies for open innovation, training models with technologies, new services for open innovation, new instruments for measuring open innovations, and training services, workshops, diplomas, certificates, and consultancies. This project contributes to open innovation through fostering collaborations between government, corporations, institutions, NGOs, and civil society. We invite you to learn more about this initiative in the project's website, energialab.tech.mx. I'd like Hello, this, uh, we are very, very proud uh, with this project. It's a big project with a lot of people, professors, students, and in different countries, not only in Mexico. The construction was in Mexico. 
uh, with our team, but uh, participate uh, USA, Spain, and Germany, and different countries and different partners. And uh, the best in this project is that we, we can train in 2,000 people, 2,000, yes, 2,000 people uh, in 50 countries, not only in Latin America. The MOOCs was in Spanish, but I don't know why the people in 50 countries they take the MOOCs. And in the MOOCs, we integrate different innovation, uh, and our team was very creative. Because in this moment, do you remember, Silvia? In this moment, the platform Mexico edX and edX no, uh, no allow the different technology and innovation that we want to incorporate and integrate. And the project was uh, very, very creative with the solution. And we studied different ways in this project. We studied about the process, learning, teaching, um, and different um, process for the building in this open education. And we have three books and 28 articles and 48 proceeding about this, about this project. And I invite my partner to explain more about the, this activity. Hi, we uh, integrate, integrated an interdisciplinary team where we work with experts in, in energy, over 30 professors uh, from different cities in, in Mexico. We also work with their guests from different parts of, of, of the world. And also we work with uh, researchers of uh, educational innovation from our uh, education faculty. And as Marisol mentioned, we had a creative team, uh, TV producers, institutional designers, graphic designers, experts in VR, augmented reality, and also we had to incorporate biometrics because when we used the Mexican platform, they didn't have that option. So we have to, to develop that thing. Also a gamification activity because we had to comply with some of the requirements by the Mexican government that we signed in the contract. We learn a lot. We, we work like uh, over uh, 50 team members over three, three year period, uh, developing the 12 MOOCs and incorporating these, um, these resources. The virtual and augmented reality resources are available in the Sketchfab platform. And uh, I guess that, that one of the uh, things that I want to convey on, on, on all of this presentation is that, as uh, has been said in the previous, uh, in the previous talks by, 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 by our fellow uh, 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 colleagues that, that earned an award uh, uh, yesterday, um, was uh, uh, the process itself that we went through was quite interesting, and, and that's something that at least we, we cherish a lot in that at the end of the day, we, uh, there were a fair amount of, of professors and, and, and researchers that were involved in, this, uh, in these activities. And, and one of the tasks that I had to do was to convince them that, that was, this was going to be an, an activity that they would, that they would enjoy. And, and you know, you're, you're talking with, with researchers that are in the lab, that they want to publish their papers. And when you start talking to them that, uh, hey, why don't you come back and, and, and start uh, uh, participating in a, in, a, in a MOOC, they say, okay, what is this all about? And in, in many of the, of the cases that, that we saw, uh, at, the, the, at the end of the day, these are professors. We are professors. We are teachers. And, and one of the things that, that I believe that they have enjoyed, and, and this is one thing that, once again, I have seen in, in, the, previous, uh, in the previous talks, is that uh, we are providing uh, open access, open source, uh, resources uh, for for the the main activity that we are that we are that we are dealing with, which is touching the lives of people, and and what is the best way to actually do it, make it this completely available, 
and and that's thing that 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 when when these these researchers went out uh, of the process, they say, hey, Alberto, you know, uh, this was truly a, a lot of work, but it, it was really really interesting to see this 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 other part of, of 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 a professor in which they can go back into the the basics of what we are base of what we are in that that they are not only teachers for a small a small amount of people, but but they eventually realized that they were touching the lives of many more. So that's something that we really, really enjoyed in that process. Thank you. Thank you. And we love the research too. And for this reason, I, we will share uh, the other This open the other research award. initiative contemplates integrated studies of educational innovation in open mass courses and open repository systems. Research contributes to open education by analyzing the effectiveness of strategies, resources, and learning in open environments, as well as the challenges of integrating educational innovation into technological systems, where open platforms and technologies have not yet reached their potential for accessibility, usability, and availability of open educational resources. This project is presented under the Open Research Awards category, described by the Open Education Consortium as a research study or initiative about open education and related areas that helps advance our understanding and demonstrate effectiveness related to challenges in discoverability, presentation, usability, accessibility, or availability of open educational resources. The Open Research Project of Educational Innovation highlights studies that are carried out by researchers, master degree students, and students of two doctoral programs in Mexico and Spain that participate in the Educational Innovation Research Group in the Open Energy Network and in the UNESCO ICDE Open Educational Movement for Latin America Chairs. The research is supported by two projects financed with public funds granted by the National Council of Science and Technology CONACYT of Mexico, which are the Binational Laboratory on Smart Sustainable Energy Management and Technology Training, the increase in the visibility of RETEC by improving the user experience and its interoperability with the National Repository. The open research activities are carried out in a collaborative network, building open knowledge through experimentation. The results account for five graduate students of the master's degree program and three PhD graduates. There had been 13 international stays, one networking and production of 21 articles, 28 papers, 12 chapters, and two books. This project contributes to open research with the development of talent, the scientific knowledge of educational innovation in open education, open publication, systematic mapping, and reviewing of literature. The knowledge generated supports the group of researchers to offer open education products and services such as educational innovations for open environments with technologies, services and strategies for open science, laboratory for social innovation, and consultancy in educational research and open education. The construction of knowledge allows the possibility to open portfolios where knowledge is transferred through training models with technologies and new services for open science, as well as new instruments for measuring innovation, open labs, and training services, such as workshops, diplomas, certificates and consultancies, research laboratory and open science in education, and sustainable living labs, among others. The transfer of knowledge can be made to different sectors as well, to government, corporations, institutions, NGOs, and society in general. We invite you to learn more about this initiative at oerunesco.tech.mx. This award is for a big team. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Marisol, Silvia, and Alberto. Uh, any questions for them? No questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And to close our session of Lightning Talks, we have Satesh Shenda, uh, and he's going to be talking to us about clicks. And they are the winners of Open Collaboration Award. Hello, all. Being the last session, I hope you all are not sleepy, feeling sleepy or something. <laughs> I will take a moment to just log in.
sorry the keyboard is not like uh, the english keyboard i i'm finding it difficult to try yes okay <laughs> yeah your drive or share with you okay. yes all right okay. here we go control f5 So Clicks Connected Learning Initiative, it's uh, seeded by Tata Trust and led by Tata Institute of Social Sciences and Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Boston. And we won the award of UNESCO 2017 and now 2019 uh, Open Collaboration Award from Open Consortium. So, so I will uh, start, start with one video which will expl explain about the project. The Connected Learning Initiative, also known as CLICS, is a collaboration between Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and the Tata Trusts. CLICS is a large-scale education technology initiative designed to impact the government education system in India. We at CLICS aim to create vibrant learning and teaching ecosystems for students and teachers in secondary schools. We see classrooms as active spaces where students express themselves, share and seek feedback in a safe environment and produce content. They learn through games, digital activities, and other interactive elements. Clicks introduces teachers to teaching learning materials and methods outside the prescribed textbooks. It helps them integrate technology in the classroom and be more in touch with their own community of practitioners. They learn and reflect together as a community and have access to experts whom they can reach out to. We are three years into conceptualizing, designing and implementing this project. We work with several partners from around the country. In four states, we currently reach 478 schools, 2,130 teachers and 32,437 students. The response we've received from our stakeholders has been encouraging. Here's what they have to say. ऐसे विज्ञान में गणित में कई होते हैं इतने मुश्किल सूत्र होते हैं लेकिन उनको बड़ा ही इस क्लिक्स प्रोग्राम के अंतर्गत बहुत ही रुचिपूर्ण लगा उनको और उनके अंदर जो फोबिया था इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स आइटम को छूने गैजेट्स को छूने में जो उनका फोबिया था वो उनका खत्म हुआ बिकॉज लिसनिंग एंड लिसनिंग एंड प्रैक्टिसिंग एंड आफ्टर टाइपिंग दे हैव गॉड द वट वी कैन से करेज टू टॉक एंड राइट एंड स्पीक इन इंग्लिश और अगर बच्चा अपने आसपास के वातावरण के आसपास की चीज़ों को लेकर के प्रयोग कर रहा है और उन प्रयोगों से सीख रहा है और जब किसी चीज़ को करके सीखा जाता है तो वह शिक्षा जो है सीखने की जो पद्धति है वह सबसे बढ़िया होती है और लॉन्ग टर्म होती है आई थिंक जोमेट्री इज मोर फन बिकॉज वी सी न्यू शेप्स लाइक वी डोंट सी इन टेक्स बुक ये होता है कि सर पढ़ाते हैं तो वो भी हमें अच्छा लगता है लेकिन यहाँ पे ज़्यादा अच्छा लगता है क्योंकि जो चीज़ हम रिकॉर्ड करते हैं और खुद सुनते हैं तो उसमें पता चलता है कि शायद हमने यहाँ पे गलती है की जिससे कि इंजॉय भी कर सकते हैं हम और मैथ भी समझ में आ जाती है इन कमिंग ईयर्स क्लिक्स विल कंटिन्यू टू ऑफर यंग पीपल एक्सेस टू इंटरक्टिव हैंड्स ऑन लर्निंग एक्सपीरियंसिस टू एडवांस देर नॉलेज एंड स्किल्स टू हेल्प दम सक्सीड एज सिटीजन So, uh, video already talks about collaboration and the implementation states across India, and this is the Clicks model for students as well as teachers. So, we have a TPD program, teacher professional development program for the teachers, and the online platform for the teachers. 
as well as for the students, we have an offline platform which goes into the schools, ICT labs, the schools which don't have an internet. So we are providing offline setup to the schools. And uh, so all the contents that we have developed along with the OER contents like the FET simulations, uh, Khan Academy videos, offline Wikipedia, all these things are packaged together and are sitting inside the ICT lab like in one of the machine which is acting as a server. And so students are actually uh, getting internet experience without internet being there. And uh, there is a COP community of practice for the teachers where the, the educators, experts, and the curriculum developers are coming together and along with the teachers, there is a continual dialogue happening. And we are using uh, Telegram as one of the tool for COP. And, and these, these are the eight macro level. I will not go into the eight in micro access, but so there is a content development, then platform development for the students, then teacher professional development as a, one of the need that when we started as a intervention, we come across this as one of the need for the teachers. And then maintaining hardware infrastructure and like preparing the labs. Like school government schools do have a labs, but which are not in use as much it should be. So we started with putting those in place. And, and then, so there is another thing is like, Though the internet is not there, but we wanted some, because the project was based on the design-based research approach, so we wanted to get the artifacts and the students, what they are doing, how they are progressing, and then based on those analytics and the data, we wanted to get back to the, dev the content developers and then wanted to curate those things back and provide it back. So we actually put the process using one of the application where if there is a chance of providing internet to the server machine by like using mobile as well. So maybe 15 KB or like 20, uh, one Mbps speed for 15 minutes or something, the machine will sync the analytics back to the central server and then we will get some analytics and we can as a feedback. And then a monitoring system for the government head teachers and teacher partners through the dashboard which will again so the data that we got from the schools it will be presented back to the system where it needs and the support system for the academic through cop and the technology support on field for maintaining the labs and 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 the school ecosystem where we are trying to make students to understand what it takes or the teachers what it takes to maintain the lab and use the lab for their daily routine and learning process. And, and so this is one of the slide, but not like everything. So this is from a research outcome that we had. So we had a baseline end line survey and based on that we come up with this outcomes that we had from uh, like last three years, three, four years of implementation. So Clix is working for English, math, science, and digital literacy. And these are some pictures of how the lab before we started and how the lab after we actually started in the, with the intervention. And the further approach to, to adopt and make it sustainable. So this is what we are looking at, like designing, the, designing labs as a model system where uh, the uh, participants, uh, the teachers would like to understand what it takes to prepare OER, how to select those. And so the model schools which are using this and making actually more sustainable use of it. 
and uh, student technology groups at the school level so that they can uh, utilize their local expertise and teacher educator groups for training the more teachers and yeah so this is the last slide so and all the contents that we have developed in, in during this uh, intervention we are making it available on clicksoer.tis.edu as a open educational resources under the CC by SA license. And that's all for my side. Thank you, Satesh. Thank you. Good luck for him. Questions for Satesh? Questions? No questions. But with this, we'll close our sequence of lightning talks. Um, and I would like to invite all our winners to the stage, please, the ones that are still here. And if um, the audience uh, join me with a big thank you, thank you to our winners for sharing their resources, projects, initiatives. They are very um, encouraging. We look forward to listening more about them in the future. So please keep us posted on how things develop. And we would really like to have a picture of all of you together, and we'll, of course, be sharing that with you. And please go ahead, go on the, on, on the stage, no? Yeah. Or, or do you want them? Yeah. And let me change the, I'll just change the screen for the. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to all our winners. We look forward to talking with you later tonight. And don't forget that our keynote will be later today in this room.